Hello, fellow 3D printers. I'm Jay Wall of Print That Thing, and today we are going to be discussing the pros and cons of the CR10 and some upgrades for it. So first off, the pros. It is very affordable if you're looking to spend less than $500 on a printer. The printing volume is huge. It's incredible. You can print insanely huge stuff. I've been printing uh, full-size masks, flexible masks, headgear, GoPro rigs, one and a half feet tall dog statues, and on and on and on. It's just really, really fun to print with this large of a volume. You can use flexibles and exotic filaments like wood, things like that. I personally did a 60 plus hour print with a flexible for a mask, which you can watch in the corner on the little eye up there. Pretty incredible. It is stupid easy to assemble. I have never put together a printer in my life. I'm more of a designer. Uh, I've had a MakerBot for the past few years, and me and my buddy Stewie put this together in probably an hour or two while drinking beer, and like within putting it together, the first like eight minutes, it was printing, so can't really complain on that. It's got really awesome print quality if you're using the right slicers. I didn't, I tried the, the file that came with it, like built in, this little kitty cat, and I think it's corrupt. Everybody was kind of saying it may have been. But that one was like, meh, it was okay. Had some ghosting and then the file will just kind of offset. But if you're using good slicing software, then you can get really, really good print quality out of these. I've been using Anthony over at the Hot Ends uh, Simplify 3D settings and they've been working like a charm. Another really cool thing about this printer, I feel like is the community that kind of has been building around it. Uh, this is my first time actually being able to upgrade and change out parts on a printer. So it's re really fun just to see everybody's upgrades and printable parts that you can put in here or just how to take it apart in general. I'm very, very, very uh, excited to be a part of that community and to help grow it. I got some ideas that'll be pretty fun. And then at the end of the video, we're going to do uh, show off some upgrades that I've made to this one uh, that I think made it a little more better. Uh, another really cool thing is that it came with extra parts. It had extra parts just built in just in case you needed them. And I thought that was really cool and convenient and actually ended up using some of them. So thanks, Creality. It also comes with tools. It, it, it gives you all almost all the tools that you need to put this together and tighten it and keep it maintained over the course of its life. So I thought that was really cool. It's pretty quiet. It's not like insanely quiet by any means. I would say it's just kind of average. Don't forget there is an affiliate link down below if you're planning on buying this printer that would help me out tremendously. Um, they're not paying me to do this review. This is, uh, they did pro provide the printer and now I'm just kind of giving my two cents. And now for the cons of this printer, it's not all it's cracked up to be. It does have some downsides. It's one of the first cons that kind of was just strange to me is that the power supply box or the brain is disconnected from the printer, which I know is pretty normal, but I come from a world of just kind of an enclosed one printer that I can just lug around really quick. So having this umbilical cord with a side brain is, yeah, it's all right. Um, I'm thinking about a way to uh, encapsulate both, but for the time being, that is definitely a con. It doesn't have Wi-Fi, duh. I know it probably shouldn't have Wi-Fi for this price point, but I've just been kind of spoiled with Wi-Fi, so I can just send my files from any computer in the house, and then it just keeps going, or... If I turn off my printer or if my computer crashes, which it did multiple times, or I would just close my laptop screen and it would kill the print. So it took me a second to get used to that. So that was definitely a con in my brain. Um, but I am using this element from Formide to make this printer wireless. And it actually works really well. It's got a built-in slicer and just kind of a cloud management system for your prints. I don't really use it for the slicer. I just upload the G code into their cloud software. And then uh, you can also control the printer from this. And if you turn your computer off, it's not gonna die or kill the print. And you can also kind of monitor it from any computer in the house or while I'm at work. So I'm pretty, I'm digging this. But yeah, these are pretty cool. So if you have uh, multiple printers, that could be of service to you. And thank you for my, uh, they gave me this about a year or two ago for my MakerBot and it wouldn't work. So finally get to use it and been using it. Uh, actually saved a lot of time and a lot of headache. So thank you. It is a dark printer, meaning it doesn't have any lights. I'm used to lights kind of already being on a printer, again, being spoiled. So if you're doing time-lapse photography, which I do, or videos of it, then you need a little 
little extra pop on the printer. And so I'm going to put on some LEDs on it. Uh, right now I've just got some zip-tied LED lights for there for temporary. But it looks pretty cool with the blue. I'm not a huge fan of how it does the time lapses. Uh, I've got a, a GoPro arm, like an octopus GoPro arm that I stuck on the side, and I don't really like how it, you know, do, 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 kind of moves the print up and down. I feel it's like too abrupt. So uh, that's one of the things. It's hard to mount a camera. I guess that's what I'm saying. Probably going to make one of those and share it with the community uh, here just for anyone else who's having the same issue. Um, it's kind of an ugly printer, uh, to be honest. It's just kind of blah. I don't know how else to explain it. It's just like... Uh, just like a few crossbars um, and these kind of ugly plastic blue strips that I've actually started to kind of like. But it's just not very aesthetically pleasing. So I'm going to just try and make some new shells or body parts to kind of put on it to, uh, you know, pimp it out and make it funky, 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 funky. Another con was that I did do some upgrades to it with 3D printed parts to make the printer better. It was like pretty good right out of the box, but you may need to 3D print some upgrades to make this printer really work well, like super well. But I think that's part of the fun. If you're not looking for something like that, then this may not be the printer for you. I will be going over some of the updates that I made for my printer uh, later in this video. When you pause the 3D printer with the knob built in on the brain of the printer, and you pause it, you know, go do something, go get some food or whatnot, uh, go to work. When you come back and hit resume, it kind of like offsets itself from the G-code. So it, it just doesn't line up. Um, and so that's kind of another con that I'm not really happy with. But to get around that, I just use Simplify 3D and the Formide uh, Element Cloud to fix it. So I just kind of bypass this whole thing. This is This extra side brain box is really just... It's more of a power and temperature box uh, getting the codes from the cloud. Another con for me was that there's no filament detection. So it doesn't know when you run out of filament. So you really have to pay attention more as before when I was using my other printer, it would just kind of pause and wait for me to put new filament in and then just go right where it left off. So I'm sure there's probably something I can up, upgrade this printer with to do that. So if y'all know anything, please put a comment below so I can uh, start researching that. So I wanted to share with you all some of the upgrades that I put on this printer to make it a little bit more better. And I've got the links in the description below with who made the designs. But one of them that was really cool is this uh, 3D Ease uh, dust protector. So you can just put that over the CR10 gear feed. And that will just keep some of the dust from getting in there. And it's got the little cuts to uh, you know help it out. And you can run some of the wire in there. It's nested in that little football goal. Uh, also put a filament guide because the filament will kind of onto the um, the access rod. So it just kind of helps push the filament away from the access rod and guides it into the printer feed. Uh, Mike sent me this. It's a filament upgrade for the printer. And then you put a little uh, Teflon or put a little bit of that tubing in there and cut it in a V shape. And that helps just kind of guide the flexible filament in there. And this is what I used, for, I just changed this one little piece out and did a 60 hour print for a White Walker mask for the Night King. So check that out in the video up here. But this thing is pretty cool. I did see a design that I want to print, which is these like steampunk feet that lift the printer up. And then you can put that brain box underneath it to kind of make it all one unit again. Um, that way I can put another printer, hopefully another CR10 right beside it. Kind of just consolidates it all together. The main one that everybody seems to print is the fan extender. So it just drops it a little, a uh, few millimeters so that the air blows more directly onto the printing part. Another very helpful upgrade is the heat bed support. It's a little bay that just takes some of the pressure off of the heating cord. And so you kind of just have to do that one just to kind of give the cords a little bit more lifespan over time. Another cool design is the tools holder. And it'll hold all the tools that they gave you, the little extra tools. And I found that really helpful just when you need to just grab something and tighten something up real quick or adjust things.
Uh, I did put some LEDs. I just zip tied some LED lights to the top and they're blue and they look pretty cool with it. But I think I'm going to upgrade to some LED strips and maybe do some uh, light shows with the code. Who knows? But yeah, thanks for watching. That's all my thoughts on the CR10. It's really an amazing, fun printer if you kind of know what you're doing. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I guess I know enough to get by. I'm more of a design guy, but I'm loving it. I'm loving the quality. Um, I did have to do some upgrades with it. And overall, uh, I'm probably going to get another one and keep making stuff. So anyways, that's all I got. I uh, hope you all have a good day. Happy printing and uh, see you all next week.